And joining us on the line, it is great to welcome from the Water Runners. For the first time we're speaking to them, folks, we have got John Littridge. G'day, John. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well, thanks. Great. Welcome to Flow. Thank you for spending some time with us today and telling us all about the Water Runners. But just before we find out about that, as, a, as yourselves, as a group, how have you been coping with this, um, um, I don't want to say the word, but we keep saying the C word. I think you'll know what I mean. So how are you <laughs> coping exactly in this? You mean. How are yeah, you coping I mean, in the C word? have a conversation without talking about it, mate. Um, <laughs> Yeah, look, look um, we're from the Kiama Jerringong area in New South Wales, which is about two hours south of Sydney. And, and up until very recently, we've been very lucky. We'd avoided uh, hard lockdown, and we had lockdown last year, um, and uh, which which led to a bit of a flurry of songwriting and tackling yep. Zoom to learn how to practice and things like that. Um, I guess we've been lucky this time round. We've been able to keep practicing up until a couple of um, weeks ago, um, and we even had the odd. Uh, small venue, um, the, uh, when I say small, small crowd venue because of the numbers limitations right up until a couple of weeks ago. But all our uh, planned dates for the rest of the year have just gone south, I'm afraid, wow. um, festivals and what have you. But anyway, we're, we're looking at it as an opportunity to do what, what we did last year and perhaps write some more songs and uh, as soon as we can get together again to jam them, we will do so. Does uh, the events that you're currently going through, you know, the, the Sea World events, is, is that influence any of the songwriting that you have done or you think you might be doing? Well, funnily enough, um, on the, the, um, the album that we uh, just recently released, Further Down the Road, the, the last song on it, Further Down the Road, is all about, uh, look, you know, um, I will catch up with you further down the road. And uh, that's the, sort of the theme of the, the song, that we yeah. may, or may always not be together, but I know I'll meet you sometime further down the road. And when, when we wrote that song, we'd just come out of lockdown and uh, last year and... Um, I guess it was that was a sentiment. We were all happy to be catching up with our friends and family again, and that was a bit of an influence. But it's taken on a greater, I guess, yeah. significance now that we're going through it all again, unfortunately. But um, I guess we've been luckier than many, and um, a couple of members of the band are full-time musos, and you know have been depending on the, the income and yep. have, have suffered. I've, I've got a couple of other thing, fingers uh, fingers in other pies to help pay the bills, which yep. I'm glad about. But I really do feel for a lot of our friends and colleagues who um, this is their main source of living and they're really struggling. I understand that. Um, I don't think there's any artist that I've spoken to in the last three months that isn't in a similar situation in relation to gigs or income. And, mm. uh, and, and that's so, which leads me to point to the website, thewaterrunners.com. You can find uh, music and things and things you can buy on that website, folks. So if you want to do that and help the band out, you can certainly do that. But that's, um, yeah, we're, we're doing that. We're giving that a plug because uh, as, no. one, as, one, as one girl said to me the other day, she goes, uh, if you could please buy a T-shirt off my website because <laughs> I need the money. And that's yeah. it. And that's, that's what it's like. And I'm like, oh, oh. okay, well, they're good. There's a pink one, so that'll help the wife yeah. out. <laughs> well, for sure, like a lot of, um, you know, uh, people are taking comfort in music during lockdown through Spotify and usual streaming services, but really you've got to get paid, played a couple of thousand times for the cost of one album. So, um, you know, whether it's us or whoever is an artist that you like, if you jump on their website and buy an album or a stubby holder yeah. or a T-shirt or whatever they're, they're selling, um, that's going to be the equivalent of getting stacks and stacks of plays on a streaming service so it's probably a, a much better way to support them if you can yes yeah, and i know those streaming services yeah you, you've got to get played a lot to get some <laughs> sort of right. income and and that's so uh, yeah buy something from the websites do that that's the, the best way to do it so you said the album uh, uh further down the road it was released recently how it's been how's it been received yeah well um the unfortunately um not a great time to, to launch an album in, in the sense that we had a a, heart, a face-to-face a couple of big launch events planned for the end of July and yep. just coincided with everything here shutting down, unfortunately. Um, but look, um, it's been received well um, through uh, the people with whom we have been able to get it out to, through radio stations, uh, through the uh, the folk and country networks that we have associations with. We're, I guess we're relatively new to the country side of things. We were more um, uh, well-known on the folk circuit, playing a lot of folk festivals. But... Yep. Um, we played our first Tamworth beginning of last year. Seems like a hundred years ago, but the beginning of twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah. And um, really loved the connections we made there with people. And um, so we have been making an extra effort in the last eighteen months or so to branch out uh, into a more of a country air and uh, uh, talk to country radio stations. Because after all, we're from a country part of New South Wales. <laughs> so um, 
Yeah, and and I guess um, what we've found is that um, whilst our music, um, it's, it's a blend, it's part, um, it's, it's folk, we call it bluegrass infused folk, I guess. It's um, okay, there's yeah. elements of bluegrass, traditional folk, country, so it's not your, you know, country rocker type music. I guess we're, we're more of a that sort of stripped back acoustic instruments, bit old timey, bit of bit sort of that stand around one mic harmony type type of music. Um, and the music on the album ranges from toe tapping numbers through to sort of more uh, a sad sort of quiet ballads. Um, yeah. But yeah, we've we've um, I guess we're a bit different to what a lot of uh, other bands are doing out there. Although having said that, you've got bands like the New Graces and Montgomery Church who are also yeah. doing a very Strip back acoustic style, and they're going great guns with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I enjoy that from time to time. I do like me full on, you know, <laughs> ears bleeding kind of uh, sort of sound. But every so often, you just need to have it just stripped back, and and you, you like that foot tapping. You like to hear the sound of the banjo and the fiddle. Even you yeah. just do it. Just it's one of those sounds that they go together, and you like hearing them. And and when it's yeah, got it's you pretty hard, moving, pretty hard yeah. to stay down when you hear the banjo and the fiddle, yeah, or the exactly and the banjo. Uh, and fiddle all intertwining with each other, and uh, it's pretty hard not to uh, have your spirits uplifted. And that's what we like to hear, and especially at the moment, it's becoming more and more pertinent. Uh, now, the single, the first single from the album, it's called "Stand on Your Own Two Feet." And speaking about toe tapping, that 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 gets your feet moving straight away. <laughs> yeah, look, it, um, we we actually had a um, it, it's the latest single off, off the album. Um, prior to the release of the album, we had um, we pre released a couple of songs that are on the album. One called Ocean, one called Eureka and, and Eureka was about a mind disaster. It was a bit of a sad old uh, song. So we thought with this next song, Stand on Your Own Two Feet, with the post the launch of the album, uh, we get that out there. It's a real toe tapper. It's a bit yeah. of fun. Um, Neil McCann, who plays banjo and mandolin in the band, it was his idea. He had this idea around a song of, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll work it out for myself. I'll stand on my own two feet. Yeah. But also the message talks about look, if things aren't working out, dust yourself off. You know, um, have a crack at it down on your own two feet and everything will be okay. And, and I guess, even though it wasn't necessarily written um, with lockdown in mind, it's turned out to be a fairly uh, poignant message and a pretty relevant message to where we find ourselves at the moment. The one thing I like about when I'm, each time I, I keep listening to it, I find myself singing along. Like if, if I was in the crowd, it's, it seems to me one of those songs that you, it's got a, you, st- you sing the first line and you allow the audience to sing that line with you and then it just seems to be that way all the way through the song. Well, we do a bit of that. We do a bit of that in our live show. We usually get people singing along, and you know, we, we I guess we've, we've built a bit of a reputation up um, with our live shows of being a um, uh, very engaging uh, band live, and we do like to get the audience singing along. Of course, none of that's allowed at the moment. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, and, and you know, we've had people say that 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 um, you know, a, a, a half a verse into the song, and we'll, they get to the chorus, and they feel like they've. It's, they know it already and they yeah. can jump in and sing along. And I'm not sure if that's a saying that um, uh, we're a bit too simple, <laughs> but I don't care <laughs> if they like it, it. It doesn't really matter. They, they seem to enjoy it and sing along. And, and yeah, there's not, it's, it's a real buzz when you do play as a band and you do see people joining in and singing along uh, with your music and or tapping their toes to the music or having a dance. Um, I can't wait for those days to return. Yeah, here, here. You're not alone with thinking that, and many others are just saying the same thing. I can hear them yelling right now, and the, and, <laughs> and, and and that's the thing with the with music. We 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 miss it so much, and when you've got a song that, as you said, engaging and it gets the audience involved, and they feel like they know it, and they, we want we want that. And I think being able to hear those songs and go to see someone do them, and you've got a song and. And okay, they might not be able to be there now, but at least they can hear it and they can relate to it. But it's it's and it's it's the fun of the song, and it just it lifts you right up. And I yeah, just, well, that's what that's we, the whole point. We wanted to do, we, and, and we wanted to recreate that with the harmonies, that bit yeah. of that old old timey style. Um, uh, the, the chord progressions in there are a bit reminiscent of some of that that old um, bluegrass style uh, changes. And yeah. Um, yeah, we really what I like about the song too is you can hear the all the instruments individually and uh, the little interplay between the fiddle and the mandolin there and, and, um, and then the harmonies coming in. And, yeah, no, it was just a good bit of fun and a bit of high energy and um, thought it might be a, a sort of shot in the arm that people might need at the moment. Oh, yes, yes, we certainly do. 
So obviously you, you've released an album, you've got a single. The next question I usually say is, how's the tour going and looking forward to all that? And we can't talk about that. So well, what, I've been what is... to the kitchen, I've been to the lounge room. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's our tour at the moment. So how, how do you guys, you guys, can you still get together or is everything over Zoom? How does yeah, it work at the moment? We were, what we um, were doing, we were still able to uh, get together once a week and have a practice because we were allowed to have up to five guests in the house up until a couple of weeks ago. Um, um, but now we can't even have that. Um, and it's just been extended for another couple of weeks. So I guess we'll look forward to the 10th of September. I'm lucky that my son, um, uh, who's 25, he, he plays in the band with us. So he, I think he sometimes feels he's paying off a long-owed family debt. But uh, <laughs> he, he plays uh, stand-up snare and does harmonies with us. And so because he's part of our household, I can um, yeah. uh, still jam with him and, and we can practice a few songs. Um, but yeah, we have to do a bit over Zoom, or um, which is tough because there's always a delay. Yeah. So what we find is that one person has to mute and uh, just play along, listening to the other person, and you miss out on that, um, you know, uh, the timing and, and the feel yeah. for it. But it's better than nothing, and it's a way to stay in touch when we can't actually physically uh, be seeing each other. Yes, it's frustrating. You, you still want to, you've got that urge and that desire and that need to sort of keep playing and doing something because it's so natural. And when you yeah, can't do yeah, well, it, it well, makes this, it hard. Yeah, this weekend, this weekend too, was uh, what they call Play Music on the, the Porch Day, which is an international movement started yeah. in America to, um, I guess because of COVID, to get people sitting on their front porch and playing music. But we can't even really do that because we'll probably be causing some sort of public mischief if we do <laughs> so. So uh, I guess it'll be playing music uh, on the lounge day or something like that. But uh, anyway, we'll, we'll, I, I know that... The, the, things will change and yep. uh, we'll come through this and come out the other side. But in the meantime, I, I really feel for uh, the musicians, particularly those that, like I said, that this is their only way of making a living. And, you know, musicians musicians are often the first ones called upon when there's some sort of disaster like bushfires, you know, to, to donate yes. services. So um, uh, it'd be great to see the public and maybe the government, if we can get them to help uh, musicians out as well. Yes, they need to. They need to. And when you say about mischief, I think it's okay if you create a bit of mischief, uh, especially as a as a, an indie folk band as you are. Because I'm looking on your website and I see one of the photos in the in the gallery of you at the Irish and Celtic Festival in uh, in Yass. And when you think about the Irish and the Celtic music, it was all based about mischief, and so it, it's just promoting mischief. So you're allowed to do it. Well, once you've had a couple of pints of the black stuff, oh. it often follows. <laughs> oh, does it ever? Yeah, no. Yes. Oh. Yeah, no, no, that's great. That's yeah. one of the things, too, we, we try to incorporate in our music, a bit of that Celtic um, aspect as well. So in our live show, you might hear everything from a, a bluesy-type song to a, a bluegrass song to an acapella song to a, um, a bit of a uh, Celtic um, traditional song. So, yeah, yeah. We, we like to combine all of those because um, really... Um, that, that country and bluegrass music has its roots, I guess, in that uh, yeah. Celtic tradition and also a bit of um, African-American tradition. So there's, yeah, um, a whole blend of things. And we like to, I guess, put our own spin on and, and but keep it, at the same time, keep it uniquely Australian and that we like to sing in Australian accents and also um, talk about local themes or Australian themes yeah. rather than sing about, you know, the Mississippi or what have you when, when we haven't been there. So... Uh, can't really relate to it so much. Yes, and those Australian themes, they're, they're prevalent, and they, you, you, that's what you're right about. That's what's there. But they're also very relatable, and that's the thing. So, and Yeah, that, that, that's what we thought. We thought, um, you know, that we wanted to do things that the, perhaps our audience could write about things that our audience could relate to. And well, someone like Paul Kelly, like he, he's he's always remained that Australianness and that relatableness is always yeah. there in his music, and he's someone we've always admired and um you know, he even released a couple of bluegrass style albums some years back, but he but he still kept them in his own style. As he always does, he's a great talent. We love our Paul Kelly, and, we yeah. love you, and we're loving you guys as well. Now, and I just want to, if you can clarify something for me. Now, I understand when you were recording the album that uh, most of the tracks were sort of like almost live. You recorded them live in the studio. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, we we, we um, were able to secure the wonderful Matt Fell, who's yep. look, like a magician um, in the studio, and he, he um, has done some great work with people like Fanny, Fanny Lumsden and, and uh, Andrew Swift and uh, Shane Nicholson and people like that. Like he, he's just amazing. But um, of course, budget and time um, were both <laughs> issues. We only had five days, basically. Oh wow! Um, yeah, so we had these twelve songs. Matt did say at the beginning, we were a bit ambitious, John. He said, um, 
you know, most people, you know, you wouldn't be looking at trying to knock 12 songs off in, in one working week like that. But, uh, you know, we, we all put our heads down. And because in the, in the last couple of months of last year, things opened up a bit for us down here for music again for gigs, yeah. we, we, we grabbed the songs that we were going to record and we played them as much as we could till we knew them back to front. So by the time we got in the studio, we weren't trying to, um, you know, write them as it were or trying to um, arrange them. We knew how we yep. wanted to do them. Um, of course, Matt gave us some input in terms of some of the uh, instrumentation and some of the, the... He had some fine little deft touches in terms of ideas that he had, which was great. But essentially, he set us up. We said that we like to, we would like to get, capture the, a live sort of sound as much as we could. So he set us up in the studio rather than putting us all in different rooms as most people would normally do and record things one by one or layer by layer. Yep. He recorded us all at once. And so we played the songs just as if we were playing them live. And we had to, you know, some of them had to do a couple of takes to make sure we got them right. But we did that and then we did the, uh, we did that over a couple of days and we did a couple of days of um, vocals and then uh, a day sort of tidying things up and um, and that was it. And wow. uh, so, yeah, I mean, I look, I listen to it and of course, you know, when it's your own work, you listen to it, you know, maybe I should have done something different there yeah. or something. But we're really happy with how it turned out and uh, really chuffed to have been able to work with Matt. He was uh, great to work with. He certainly is. And the new album, Further Down the Road, it is out now and from the Water Runners, and we've got their, their lead single from it ready to go, ready for everyone to enjoy and uh, get set, folks. You want to turn it up, and you're going to enjoy it, and you're going to want to sing along to it. That will be a given. John, it has been fantastic chatting to you. We'll have to do this again, so uh, release something in a couple of months so we can have another chat. Hopefully you be able to tell me about some gigs you're doing as well, hopefully. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. We might, might know a bit more by then. Yeah, we certainly hope so. John, it has been fantastic chatting to you. Thank you so much for spending time with us today on Flow. We've got your single here ready to go. If you could please introduce it for all our Flow listeners. G'day. Um, all right, thanks, listeners. Thanks for listening to The Water Runners. And here's our uh, song coming to you from Flow FM. It's called Stand On Your Own Two Feet. <laughs> When I was young, just 17, my father told me, son, I'm not so sure you know the way to get those big deals done. I told him that was not my scene. I didn't need no go between that I would stand on my own to be. When I was working in my job My boss complained to me She said, ask Joe, he's over there He knows how it should be I told her that was not my scene I didn't need no go-between That I would stand on my own to be and if the road ahead starts shifting Stand on your own two feet And if your world just keeps on drifting how oh, stand on your own two feet When you're not sure which way to go I Don't turn around, don't head back home You've got to stand, gotta stand on, your own, on your own two feet Feeling down and out Don't hang your head in shame Don't listen when they tell you that Ah, you're the one to blame Just tell them that was not your scene That you don't need no go between That you will stand on your own to be and if the road ahead starts shifting Stand on your own two feet And 
make your world just keeps on drifting Oh, stand on your own two feet When you're not sure which way to go But don't turn around, don't hit back home You've got to stand on your own Stand on your own Stand on your own two feet 